Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brightstream TV. I'm your host, Josh Cavalier, and today we're going to be taking a look at Lectora Publisher 12 Sprint. Uh, this is going to be a complete project here this afternoon, and this particular project is going to be using a tool that's been, been around for a while in e-learning development, Lectora Publisher, uh, based in HTML, which bucks the trend from the typical usage of Flash. Most tools out there uh, start in Flash, but Lectora, no, it's a little bit different. It's going to start in HTML. And so we're going to go ahead and take you through, from the ground floor, how to use Lectora. We're going to look at the interface. We're going to start building out some slides, add some quiz questions in there, some interactions, and build a complete project from beginning to end. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Lectora 12 Publisher. Okay, so today for this sprint, we're going to just get started with the fundamentals. Take a look at the interface, get our bearings, get in there, and start a file. We'll take a look at the structure of a Lectora Publisher course, which is really critical. I'm going to spend a lot of time in here today looking at something called inheritance. So inheritance plays a big part in making sure that your file uh, is correct in regards to navigation and functionality. We'll be taking a look at setting up a theme, which actually should be pretty quick today with Lectora because we have uh, numerous themes that we can take advantage of. And then we'll go in and start building out some pages. We'll also look at publishing and getting this project out the door. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, before we get rolling here, uh, real quick, just want to make sure that if you are watching, you can uh, send me your questions, ask Brightstream TV. That's hashtag ask, ask Brightstream TV. And during the break, I'll go ahead and review those questions and get back with you and uh, we'll see what you got. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the interface here in Lectora Publisher 12. All right, so let's go ahead and get rolling here with Lectora Publisher. And it's going to go ahead and launch it. All right, so once this opens up, we're going to go ahead and be presented with a getting started with Lectora screen. Now, there's a lot going on here, so let me go ahead and break down for you the various options. Over here, we want to start a new blank title. This is completely from scratch, so if you don't have any prior content and you want to go in and just get going with a blank title, it's front and center there. The design wizard. This is going to walk you through some steps if you have some structure or some ideas as far as how you want your project set up. The design wizard is going to help you out there. Templates. Yeah, if you've gone in, you've saved yourself uh, a template or you have a template you want to start with, you can use My Templates. Notice that you can import PowerPoint. So if you have a PowerPoint deck, you can import it right into the Lectora environment. You can also take a look at templates online. So there are numerous templates, starter templates you can take a look at and execute on. Lectora, or Trivantis, uh, has a lot of various learning resources that you can take advantage of. And this is all going, this is all going to take you up to the Trivantis website, video tutorials, click and learn, Lectora University, and so on. We've got a news area right here. So Trivanta is going to keep you updated with the great Lectora news coming down. And we have different items over here under launch. Now, again, I am just using the publisher today as opposed to Inspire. You may have heard of Lectora Inspire. Inspire is a suite of tools which includes Camtasia and Snagit. But because I'm just using publisher, you can see that we have an option here for a review link, and that's about it. You can also contact support. All right, very good. Today, we are going to just open up a new blank title. Let's get that started. So here is the Lectora interface, and you can see that it is fairly simple so far, 
But once you start digging in, you're going to notice it's going to get a little complex. So we only have a single page right now that we're working with. Across the top, you can see that we have ribbons. So it's somewhat PowerPoint-like when we talk about the interface. We have these ribbons across the top, and this is going to give us access to various features as we continue through our project. Okay, so we got Lectora open. Now, what about our student files? So if you've downloaded the student files, let's go ahead and take a look at those and see what we got. All right, in the student files, you can see that we have a storyboard that we're going to go ahead and open up and take a look at. And so we'll be building out these pages throughout the course. Also, in our student files, you can see we have a PowerPoint deck, and we also have a Word version of the storyboard if you want to open that up. In lesson two, we have some audio, we have images, and we got a video clip in here of Chef Tim. Lesson three, we, all have, we have a logo. And in lesson four, we have some additional images here of some yummy food. Hopefully you've eaten before you have jumped into this course. All right, let's look at our storyboard. So the storyboard is going to give us a breakdown as far as the different slides that we're going to be working with. Slide types, again, it's a very, very simple course. Just so you can follow along and we can learn the fundamentals of Lectora as you build this simple course, but each slide has a little bit of, of everything in there. We have a title slide, we have learning objectives we're going to go ahead and build out from PowerPoint. We have a video overview of Chef Tim. We got a knowledge check, topic slides, a couple interactions, knowledge check, another topic slide, another interaction, and a final quiz. Now we may not be able to get to all this today, but this is going to be a good head start for us and give us a guide in regards to the content that we're going to set up. All right, so that is the background there. I'm going to leave that storyboard open in the back as we go in and open up Lectora. All right. So I want to, again, revisit something I mentioned at the beginning or the top of the show in regards to the architecture in Lectora Publisher. You know, many of the tools that I use have been founded in Flash. Now, I know that Flash is, you know, headed out the door and we're progressing to HTML5, but Lectora is special in that its foundation has always been in HTML. That's right. I mean, we can add Flash content into the Lectora environment, but its foundation is HTML which is going to allow you to uh, distribute your courses across multiple devices, in browsers, both in the desktop and mobile. So, hey, that's got, that's got that going for it, which is great. Uh, and so you're going to notice that the architecture is going to be a little bit different. Over here, we have some pages over on the left-hand side, and I'm used to a timeline. Where's the timeline at? Well, there's no timeline in Lectora. But we do have this page architecture that we're going to work with. Now, don't get me wrong, we can still do animations and time-based effects, except this is not a timeline-based application. It's very much page-centric. It's going to load pages at a time, as opposed to loading everything at once, like Flash. So you're going to have very quick loads. Uh, and you'll be able to go in and make edits quickly inside this environment, both globally if you're working with artwork, uh, or text. So let's go ahead and let's jump in and take a look at the Lectora Publisher interface. Starting over on the left hand side we have the Title Explorer. The Title Explorer is going to be the place you're going to look for the entire architecture of your course. We don't have much going on at this point. I have a title and I have a page with nothing on the page, right? It's a blank project. So uh, once we start building out our project, you're going to notice that you're going to have additional pages and there's going to be additional architecture in here. But for right now, it's extremely simple. One title, one page. Across the top, again, we do have ribbons that are going to support our different functions in, our, in the Lectora environment. We have design. So we'll be getting into that in just a moment. Insert all kinds of different content, images, media, navigation, interactions, web objects, and so on. 
They're all represented here. When it's time for a knowledge check or a test, we're going to go into test and survey. We have tools that we're going to be using. We want to edit audio, video. We want to add a variable. We want to get content from PowerPoint and so on. View, this is where we're going to be previewing our work and also working with the environment in regards to layout, showing grids and rulers, zooming in and zooming out. And then we have property ribbons. So whether we're working with a page or an image or a video, whatever asset we're going to be working with, that asset will have properties. Excellent. So we have our ribbons across the top. Let's go ahead and move our attention over to the right-hand side, and you can see that we have a couple buttons over here. And if I just hover over, I can see that this pops out. The first section is Title Resources. Well, we don't have any resources in here yet. There's no images or audio or anything, so it's blank. We have My Library. This is going to contain your library objects. And then we have the Stock Library. And Lectora has within it buttons and characters, clip art, media online, all ready for us to use. All right, so that's going to be our library area. I'm just going to click in the middle here and notice that the panel retracts back over to the right-hand side. Down at the bottom right-hand corner, we have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. And this is important so that we can actually see our whole entire page right here that we're working with. Notice that we also have alignment features down here. So we have multiple objects that we want to align. We can easily access those functions down here. And then we have our preview options. We'll get into those in just a little bit, but we have buttons down here that will help us out. Excellent. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about the architecture in the Lectora environment. We're going to start at the home ribbon and take a look at structure. Structure in Lectora is going to give us the whole entire course. The course is set up in chapters. Chapters can have sections. And within there, we can have pages. Now, if you are going to be tracking your students' quizzes and going back to a learning, manage learning management system, you will need something called an assignable unit. All right, and we'll get to that in just a bit. But let's talk about this architecture. Up at the top, we have a title. Your title will always be here at this blue book. Underneath that title, we can go in and organize our content in various ways. We can just have pages, we can have chapters, chapters can have sections, and so on. Let's take a look at building some structure in here. Let's say we're going to go in and add a chapter. Let's go ahead and click on Chapter. Again, notice I have Title 1 selected. And a chapter, a chapter is created. Let's go ahead and click on Chapter. And let's select Section. And now I have a section. Notice that my chapter and my section each have a page. So I have three pages of content, but Lectora has gone in and created this structure for me. Now, the structure is going to be great for when we want to um, have functionality like menus, and we want the user to jump to a different chapter or to a, a different section. Let's go ahead and move back up to Title I. Another thing that I mentioned about Lectora is inheritance. And there's going to be a lot of conversation today about parent-child relationships. The title is the parent. The child is the chapter. And then the chapter has a child called the section. Now, what's going to happen is everything in Lectora is a top-down um, load. <laughs> what does that mean, a top-down load? Well, let me, let me get into that just a little bit. So when we're looking at the Title Explorer, everything is top-down, meaning that when the whole entire application loads into memory, right, even if we're going one page at a time, Lectora is going to go ahead, start at the top, load everything in under the title, 
and then everything loaded there potentially could be in the rest of the course. That's what we call inheritance. So things that are throughout the whole entire course, let's say a next button, a back button, maybe a drop down menu. These are all things that are going to be throughout our whole entire course and so we're going to want to load those up first. Then as I get into my chapter, maybe there's something that goes throughout the chapter, like a title, like welcome to the course. And so I can go ahead and put that title in there for the chapter and even through the chapter sections. So what we have to think about when we are building out a lectora course is what type of functionality do we want? Do we want to have a menu? Do we need a forward and back button? You know, what are the possibilities for uh, different types of progress bars uh, or any other kind of indicators that you need to give to the student and or resources? So these are things I'm going to load in first. All right, let's jump back in. We've gone in, we've built a little bit of our structure. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the design aspect. Let's go ahead and click on design. Another consideration when starting your file is going to be the page size. Let's click on page size. The first option off of page size is for iPads, tablets, and computers. Let's go ahead and click on standard. So that is the default right there, the 1009 by 662, the standard resolution that's just going to fit inside of a 1024 by 768 monitor. Now, of course, your lectora content is going to be inside of a browser, right? So we need a little bit of room in there to accommodate. There are some other resolutions in here. We've got a low resolution monitor. We have a high resolution widescreen. And we also have smartphones in here. Now, these resolutions are what we call fixed resolutions. They're not responsive. A responsive design is going to respond to the width of the window. Lector does not handle that. It handles fixed resolutions, which if you have an environment where there's consistency in regards to consumption on tablets or on desktops, this is going to play to your advantage. We are going to keep the standard resolution, the 1009 by 662. So let's go ahead and select it. Here we have title options. Let's select that. So notice we can go in and give our title a name. It's very generically titled Title I. Well, I always say you got to name it to claim it. So let's go ahead and give this a name. We're going to go ahead and call this Springhouse. What type of title is it? Is it a standard title or are you tracking using AICC, SCORM, or XAPI? All right? So currently this is standard and there's no variation here within my structure. Now watch what's going to happen here. I know for many of you, you're going to want to track the student's score. Let's go ahead and choose AICC and SCORM. The language is going to be English, and for right now, we're going to leave the enable dynamic text and use web accessibility settings unchecked. And let's click OK. Something has happened to our structure. Notice now that underneath our title, we have assignable unit A001. You get this awesome gold little folder here. Now, this gold folder is special in that the content within it, hey, look at that. That's where everything went. The content within here is going to be able to be tracked back to a learning management system. Without it, we can't track. So again, I know for many of you, tracking is important. So we're going to leave that folder in there. Now, if you are going to a corporate intranet, hey, you can leave it out. You don't need any assignable units for your lectoral course. But we'll leave it in here today. Excellent. Now let's go in and take a look at HTML page alignment. Again, everything that we create in Lectora is HTML based. No flash here. You can put a flash element in, but again, everything's HTML. You could choose to have your course left justified or all the content centered. Again, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to go in and for today, let's change this to centered. 
Now let's get into a theme. So the themes, well, it's more than just a look. We have numerous themes here in the drop-down, and the themes are going to give us not only a look, but also give us functionality. Currently, my, my course doesn't have any buttons. There's no back button. There's no next button. It's completely blank. But things are going to change here rapidly when you go in and you include a theme. Now let's take a look through our themes here, and we need something that's going to represent Springhouse. And I'm looking through, and I see something right here. This connection's Lime. Looks like it might have the Springhouse green in there. Let's go ahead and select Connections Lime. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> well, what happened? Yeah, that's a little shocking what happened. You go and you pick a theme, and all of a sudden this blank course that you're working with now has all of this functionality. Don't panic. Uh, it's set up really nice for you in regards to functionality. Now the question is, well, how does all this work? You give me all kinds of good stuff in here. I got a home button, and I got some navigation buttons. I got an exit button. Hey, that's great, but how do we make all this uh, come together? So now I want to go in and talk a little bit more about inheritance and how this works. And so, again, everything is a top download, and we're going to see that right here. By just adding this theme and all this functionality, we get, this, uh, we get all these different elements that have appeared up at the top. Let's now take a, look, a closer look, see how this works, and how you can modify and change inheritance to your advantage. Wow. All right, so we just added that theme in here. And you'll notice that up at the top that we have theme graphics. What we see right here is a group. So let's break down what's happening in here with this group. I have a plus icon, and if we click the plus icon, it opens up the group, and whoa, I get a whole bunch of different images in here. This icon represents an image, and you can see that by implementing this theme, we have all this various artwork. This top bar, and go ahead and select it, and you can actually see the artwork highlight as you make those selections. The bottom bar, bottom line, home, help, exit, back, next, these are all disabled artwork underneath here. All right, and this is all inside of a group. So this is the group icon. Now, next to the group icon, we have a visibility box. And if we click on the visibility box, notice that all of the artwork goes away. The whole group goes away. If you choose the visibility for these individual elements here, you can see they are removed one at a time. The visibility option is incredibly helpful for development purposes. Uh, this is not going to hide the content when you publish. So if you have items that are stacked up on top of each other or you're trying to create a complex interaction, you can temporarily turn something off, work with elements underneath, and turn those items right back on. So this is all the artwork that's in the background. Now keep in mind, because of a top download, all this content is loaded into memory first. It's loaded into memory first, which means that it's going to be sitting in the background behind everything else. All right, what's next? The logo. The logo placeholder. Now eventually we'll be putting the Springhouse logo in there, but for right now we got a placeholder. And it's loaded in second after the theme graphics, which means it's going to position itself on top of the theme graphics. Right? It's loaded in second. We have a home button. We have a help button, an exit button, and down below we have a back and a next. We also have the course title. We have a page title. And we have a little director's clapboard. That right there is an action. 
and the action is going to do something for us and in this case it's going to dynamically place the page title in there. That's fantastic. We'll get more into actions later on. Actually, I'm going to close that up here. And then finally, we get our content down below. All right, so once again, with this top-down load, everything is going to load up here and then make itself available for all the pages down below. Whether I'm putting in a title, learning objectives, a content page, all of this, all these elements are going to be available for all my pages, all my chapters, and all my sections. And it's up to me how I want to go ahead and handle that. All right, excellent. So now, what about the functionality? What about the back button, the next button? How is all of that working? Lectora has programming elements in it, and these are actions. Let's go ahead and go up to the Home button, and let's open it up. All right, now I have some actions that are in here on the Home button, and I'm going to go ahead and just click on these, and watch what happens. When I click on Home, selecting the Home button, and then when I click on an action right here, I get the action panel or the action ribbon. Let's go ahead and click on action ribbon. Now I'm not going to get too deep into this. I'm just going to give you the quick overview and we'll go into actions later on. But the short of it, here's what's happening. It's saying here that when the user clicks the home button, click the home button, it's going to go to the first page in the title. It's going to be right here. This is our first page in the title, page one. All right, we have some other actions in here that's helping us out with the look of the button. But you get the idea, right? You click it, you go to the first page. What else do we have? We have a help button, and there's a help action. Currently, there's no programming in it, there's no action, so we're going to have to go ahead and set that up ourselves. We have an exit. Let's open that up. On click, exit and close the course. The back button, on click, go to the previous page. And then the next button, on click, go to the next page. Man, that is awesome. All of this was created for us in the, uh, in the framework. We didn't have to do anything except just click. The theme came in and all this functionality came in with it. And I know it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, but it's extremely powerful. And you're going to see that as we um, continue on and work through this course, how important to front load all these elements are, because this is the foundation. This is going to be the potential look and the potential functionality for the whole entire course. But we can tweak and change things as we go through. And let's take a look at that right now. We're going to take a close look at something called inheritance. All right. As I mentioned before, Lectora Publisher is going to front load all of this content. And when we go in and we click on page one, all these elements in here are visible. They have been inherited to page one. Page one itself has no content on it. Everything is coming in from the front load. Let's go ahead and select page one. Let's go to page properties and take a look at this feature right here, inherit. Let's go ahead and select it. These are the inheritance settings for page one. Again, what it's saying here is that on page one, it gets a back button. It gets a course title and exit button and so on all the way down. It's going to grab all the objects from parents. What's the parent? Well, the title itself right up here. That's the parent. Now, I can change this. I can say give me no objects from parent or give me specific objects from parent. Let's try no. 
let's just say I don't want any objects from my parent, and click OK. Hmm, it's where we were before at the beginning, right? Just a blank page. Yeah, there's no inheritance. Look at the um, icon. Notice the icon has changed. Instead of them all these blocks being blue, I have a blue block at the top and two gray boxes down here, which means that nothing is inherited. Nothing at all. Well, my gosh, we, we better get our interface back here. Let's go back up to in, inherit. Well, all right, well, if we want all objects and click OK, now they're all back. And notice that these blue boxes are all filled in, meaning that all the objects have come back and are being inherited from the parent, which is the title up at the top. Well, let's think about page one. Page one is going to be our title screen, and we should name that title. How do we change a name in Lectora? Simple. Just go over to the Title Explorer. We're going to double click. We get to change the name. So I'm going to go in and type in title and hit enter on my keyboard. Let's go and capitalize that. There we go. So I've gone in and I have, this is now my title screen, but you know what? On my title page, why would I need to have a button going back, right? Why would I need a button going back? I really don't need to show that button. So I could exclude it from the page, exclude it from the page. Let's go to page properties and click on inherit. Here is our excluded column. We're going to click the drop down and select specific objects from parents. That means I only want to inherit just some of the objects. The object that I want to exclude off the title page is going to be the back button. So we'll select the back button, let's exclude it, and click OK. And look what happened. It's not highlighted anymore. That button is gone. It's still in memory, it's still available to Lectora Publisher, but for this particular page, it's not going to load. Man, how cool is that? There's so many different things that we can accomplish by going in and setting inheritance for our course. All right, excellent. So hopefully this has gotten you started as far as inheritance and how it works. Uh, again, this is going to be a major theme for this particular piece of software. Inheritance is going to be a big part of your life when you use Lectora. You're going to have to premeditate and think about how things are going to be dependent. Um, so when I have a title that's going to load, what's the background artwork like we saw here with this theme, what are all the functions, and as we continue this course, we'll add some additional functionality in. We're going to add a drop-down menu um, that's going to use our chapters and sections uh, to build out. But again, it's going to be a common element throughout the whole entire course. Now, once we get down into our chapters, the same thing happens. If we go in and we add something into the chapter, it's available to the sections, and I can use inheritance to turn that on and off. So this parent-child relationship is going to continue. All right, excellent. All right, so now let's go ahead and start looking at our individual pages, our individual pages, and we're going to jump back in and start adding some content Let's first look at that logo. Let's add that logo in there, and then we'll work back down and go into our title page. So with the implementation of this theme, you can see that we have this logo placeholder. Go ahead and select it. The logo placeholder is sitting right here, and we want to swap that out and put in our Springhouse logo. First, let's go ahead and delete the logo. I'll select the logo, I have it here, I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard, and it's gone. That was pretty simple. I now want to insert the logo for Springhouse. Let's click on Theme Graphics right above it. We'll go to the Insert ribbon, let's select Image, and this is going to be an image file. All right, so once you find the student files, we're going to go into Lesson 2, 
images, and let's grab the Springhouse logo. And let's hit open. So here's the Springhouse logo, and we can go in and start moving it up. Obviously, this is too big, but notice you can grab one of the edit nodes on the corner here. I'm going to click and drag, and look at that. We can scale this down and move it into position. Let me scale it down just slightly, a little bit more. And we'll just move it into position right there. All right, whoa, where'd it go? All right, so one of the things that um, you need to be aware of is the redraw inside of the uh, inside of the Lector environment. Now, if we, if we think about where things are at and how the load occurs, the Springhouse logo is now sitting on top, right? And that's going to load first into memory. So it's at the bottom of our stacking order. Then the top bar loads in second, top lines, and so on. So having the Springhouse logo load in first that's not going to work because our artwork top bar is going to cover it up once it loads after the logo. What to do? Well, we could go in and change the order of the load simply by clicking on the object and dragging it up and down. Let's try that. Click on Springhouse logo, let's click on it, and let's start dragging down. And look at that. We get an insertion bar that appears that give, is going to give us a visual indication where this artwork is going to load. Let's go ahead and drag down and say, let's load it at the bottom. Ah, there is the artwork. OK, excellent. So the, the top bar is going to load first, and all these are going to load in second and third, and then finally the logo is going to load in last right there. Perfect. When you're working with objects inside the Lector environment, once you have an object selected, take a look for additional properties. Notice here that I have an image selected, so I have additional ribbons across the top. Properties, style, position, and size. Right. So if I needed to go in and let's say make this a little bit larger, I'm having a hard time selecting it, no worries. I can just go into position and size, and let's say set the width here to 155, hit enter, and it scales it up slightly. That's definitely a lot easier than trying to go in and select one of these small edit nodes at this point. So I can continue nudging this up, 160. Uh, that looks great. As far as the position, let's say I want to make it you know, move just a little bit over on the x-axis, maybe 26, and move it over slightly. Once that's in position, and I know it's going to stay in position for the whole entire course, we can go in and lock it down. Once you lock it down, no worries, you can't go in and move that object around. That is locked into position, and that's extremely helpful. Now keep in mind that while you're working in Lectora, if for some reason you select an object and can't move that object around, odds are it's probably locked. So you have to go into that object specific position and size ribbon and then modify the lock property. Excellent. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about Lectora being contextual and as you select objects, how you can go into those specific object properties. Now we were just working with this image here. I can still select it even though it's locked. And we talked about properties, style, position, and size. Let's go ahead and click the course title goes here. Different type of element, I'm now working with a text object, but look at that, properties, style, position, and size. What about that home button? Same thing, property, style, position, and size, it's a button, but now that button has an action. It has an action, so I get an additional ribbon to help support that button. So just keep that in mind. Everything is contextual as you select it, you do have these additional options across the top. Okay, back to our title page. All right, so on our title page, we need to go in and add 
a giant title in here. This is going to be the Springhouse uh, orientation. Let's go in and insert some text. Now, another thing you could also do, you know, prior, if you wanted to, is insert PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, just keep in mind that PowerPoint, the PowerPoint workflow, uh, is going to insert the the PowerPoint deck in, and it's going to want to make a brand new title when you insert PowerPoint. Let's take a look at that real quick. Because I know that on our storyboard, if we go back to the storyboard here, it says import from PowerPoint. Well, we don't have the ability to go ahead and start a new title at this point. So just be mindful that when you go in and you file, import, PowerPoint, I have that PowerPoint deck selected from our lesson one directory and I click OK, it really wants to go in and create a new title. All right? So, I mean, if you have a large deck, this may be the way that you want to start the course. For our course and what we have, we're all set already with our theme. We're all set with our functionality. So we're going to go ahead and skip just adding in the PowerPoint. We'll just add in the text from the PowerPoint. If I click Next, you can see that you can select the size, you can select transitions, and you can go in and select format for the images that are coming in from the deck. Again, this is both for PPT and PPTX. Let's hit cancel. Okay, so from our storyboard, we're going to have employee orientation, our culture. So let's go in and let's add that text in here. Let's go to the insert ribbon. So on the insert ribbon, the first item over on, over on the left-hand side is the text block. Let's go ahead and select it. And we get a text block front and center. Now, before we start adding all kinds of different elements in here, take a look at your page and where that text block was added. Again, this was added directly into the page. So from a structure standpoint, you can see that it's indented here on the page, text block. I'm going to go ahead and double click the text block and rename it. This is going to be the main title. And I'm just going to grab the text here. I'm just going to copy it from Word, double click, paste, and we have our text inside there. All right, now obviously that is really small. So let's go ahead and take a look at the formatting. When dealing with text, we can go into the home ribbon. You can see that we have text properties right here on the home ribbon. We can go in, we can change the font. We can go in and change the, the font size. Let's say I want to bring this up here large. Like so, set it at 48. I'm just going to center this on the screen. All right, so that's fairly easy to go in and modify. Again, we can't go in and do very typical, you know, text-based editing, make it bold, italic, underline. Uh, we can go in superscript, subscript, and so on. We can go in and change the text color. So we have a palette to work from. We can make a custom color. So you can go in and select or even go in and type in your RGB uh, values in here. We also have an eyedropper tool. So if I want to borrow a color from the interface, I can go in and choose that. Maybe the green here from the logo. Let's go a little bit darker. There we go. Not exactly black, nice dark gray. All right. So again, when working with our objects in here on this individual page, they're going to start building right below the title page. Let's say we want to add some artwork in here. Let's go back to Insert. Let's select Image. 
and insert an image file. We're going to go ahead and get this small shot here of the Springhouse restaurant. Hit open. All right, so the artwork comes in. Obviously, it's too big. No worries. You can always grab a corner point here on the object, click and drag, and that's going to scale the artwork down. Again, my recommendation is to always go ahead and prep your artwork so that there's no reason to scale it once it's in the um, development environment. But in this case, it's a pretty easy edit, and we can go in and add our, and add our photo. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have the alignment objects down below here and the alignment options. So with that photo selected, I can go in and choose center horizontally on the page. And uh, wow, it's pretty close. It looks like it's centered on the page. Notice that image does have properties. We do have style and we do have position and size. All right, so I think we got this title page done. Let's go in and take a look at the additional pages. So once we go in and we have the title page set here, moving on, uh, we have our learning objectives. All right, so let's say that we're not exactly into our course just yet. Right, that learning objectives really maybe come, is going to come after the title right here. So how do we go in and add additional pages and start building out content? All right, so to add a page, let's go back to the home ribbon. We want to find the add structure section. And in here, this is where we're going to go in and add an additional chapter, add a section, or add a page. And we want to add a, a brand new page. But look at some of the options here. Wow. There are all types of layouts that we can go in and use when we're laying out this page. Now the default just here is blank, but notice we can go title only, title and subtitle, and so on. If I know there's an image in here, I can add an image, um, and it just goes on and on. Whether you have video, you have flash content, and so on. Continue to scroll through. All right, let's say that we want to do an image and text column. Again, let me show you where that's at. So you can go in and select image and text column. It says double click here to add text, double click here to add an image. Wow, that's really cool. So it lays the page out for us. Notice the page has been inserted and we already have two elements inside there, a text block and an image, similar to what we were working with on the title page. We want to go ahead and rename our page two. Again, you always got to name it to claim it. So let's double click page two. And this is going to be our learning objectives. And you can just hit enter to accept that value. All right, now what about our text? Well, we can always go back to the storyboard. I'm just going to copy those. And obviously, these are not fully flushed out as far as learning objectives, but it's going to be a start. And again, editing the text, you'll go up to the text area. You can go in and select Welcome. Let's say that I want that to be 24, bold. We have our elements here. Those are going to be 22. And maybe I want to add some bullet points. So we can add bullet points in there. And it looks like I just added one. Turn that off. Let's see if I can get bullet points on all these. That's interesting. You know, sometimes when you copy and paste from, uh, from Word or from another tool, you may get this type of activity going on where you're like, hey, I'm only getting a single bullet point. You know, don't worry about that. Um, what you can do is go in and just a little bit of work, you know, hit backspace and hit enter. And notice that it's, it's adding those bullet points back in. So it didn't see it as a hard return, but that's not a problem. We can go in and add that in there. All right, I'll turn that bullet point off. Excellent. Now what about the image? Sure, it just says double click here to add an image. Just double click. 
Let's go ahead and put Chef Tim in there and hit open. And there's Chef Tim. All right, so uh, notice that the image scaled to the size of the placeholder area. Um, that may not work for you, it just depends upon the initial size of the placeholder. So my recommendation is, you know, before you place the artwork in there, take a look at the position and size. You know, make sure that it's the same as your artwork. Now, I can go ahead and reset the original here, um, but this is going to be huge. But let's go ahead and reset original. That's a huge piece of artwork. But what I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to uh, change the width to 300. And that changes the height to 450. And there's Chef Tim looking really good. Now, of course, you can go in and you can modify and you can change where these elements are sitting, like so, just by going in and either clicking and dragging and moving the item or changing the edit nodes on the side. All right. Wow. Okay. So we got a couple pages laid out here. Now what? Well, test. Test early and test often. So now we're going to take a look at the various ways of going in and testing your work here in the Lector environment. Again, we're looking at HTML. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go in, preview, make sure our, our content is looking good, and then we'll continue adding our pages. So let's take a look at previewing content in Lector Publisher. OK, it's preview time. Let's go to the View ribbon. So at the View ribbon, you can see that over on the left-hand side that we have certain modes. We've been in edit mode since the beginning of the course. And now you can see that we have Run, Preview, and Debug. Let's go ahead and click Run. So by going in and clicking Run, Lectora is going to preview the course inside the Lectora, uh, the Lectora development environment. Now, I can go in and scroll down and take a look at my content here. Notice that there are rollovers that are working in here. I can hit forward. I can hit back. Hit back again. And my employee title Employee orientation title comes up. No back button. Love it. Let's go ahead and go back to edit. Next is the preview. This is going to preview the, full the title in a full screen. Now, this is going to give me a little bit more screen real estate here. So whereas before, I was pinned in by all the other menus and panels, now this gives me some room to breathe. And I can really see the whole entire course here. I'm going to hit Next. We get the next build. And then we have an additional page in there. Oh, look at that. Notice that the text is dynamically coming in there. Now, we haven't talked about actions all that much, but that's what's making that work. We have some, we have some text that's dynamic. And if I want to exit the course, I can just click the X, and that also closes out of the preview. If I had a lot of programming going on, I can debug, which is a little bit out of scope of what we're doing here today. But there's a nice debugging section, again, for more advanced usage in the Lectora Publisher environment. And then finally, we have preview page in browser. Now, this is going to give you an option based upon the browser you have installed. Here uh, today, I have either Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. I'm going to go ahead and select Google Chrome. Chrome launches, and there's my course. And it functions the same way. Again, this is all HTML content. And of course, it's only going to give me the one page. So when I click, you can see that it's not found, and that's fine. That's just the one page that I'm looking at. It says preview page in browser, and that's what I got, just the one page. Awesome. 
All right, so a couple things here that you really want to take advantage of because you are previewing so often, take a look at the keyboard shortcuts, right? So edit mode is going to be F12, run mode is going to be F10, preview mode is F11, and when you preview in a browser, it's going to be F9. So you'll be using those keys a lot. I, know, I mean, I know for me, um, going in and hitting uh, F11 just to preview, and then F12 to cut back out. So F11 and F12, use that frequently, back and forth, test, and then jump back out. Awesome. Alrighty. So we've gone in and we have our two pages here. We have our title and our learning objectives. Now, once you go in and you finish up these, finish up these pages, uh, I do recommend going in and cleaning up your title explorer. You know, keep things closed that you're not using. For instance, these theme graphics. Well, we got those theme graphics squared away early on. Just go ahead and click on the minus symbol and close them up. And you can see already we got this nice, simple um, title explorer. You know, once you start popping everything open, it can get really cumbersome to look at. So we're gonna keep everything closed and only open up what we're using. The title is all set, at least for now. Let's go ahead and close up title. Learning objectives, those are all set. We'll close that, those up. And now we're finally gonna get into our chapter. So this is where we're gonna go into our content. So let's go ahead and rename chapter one and call this course content. All right, now we're gonna take a look at our architecture here, our course, and we're gonna have a video overview, we're gonna have a knowledge check, we're gonna have a topic slide, and we're gonna have an interaction and so on. So again, this is a fairly simple course. You know, we do have a quiz at the end, and we'll talk about that structure later on. So, you know, am I required to go in and add sections in here? Can it just all be pages? Sure, it can. It's entirely up to you. It really depends upon how complex your course is. If you have deep dive into topics, yeah, you may want to go ahead and put sections in here, but it's not a requirement. I know that we've gone in and we've added a section in here, um, but you can go in and you can remove it out. So if you had a series of interactions, maybe it's a series of knowledge checks, and you want to put it together as a section, hey, Go right ahead. Um, one advantage that you do get from adding sections in here is that you can go in and control inheritance. Just like we can grab something from a title and all the items inherit down, you could do the same thing here. Again, at the title level, you can go in and grab something from the chapter level. So if there's something unique that's at the chapter level and I want it to appear in my sections, I can go in and set that up and then set the inheritance. Let's take a look at that. So let's say that we're getting into the course content and we wanted to go in and maybe add a, um, a little bit of text. All right, so let's say that we want to go in and maybe add a little bit of text down here at the bottom that, uh, that indicates that that we're in a certain section, right? So we're in the, the main course. So let's go ahead and actually we'll, we'll put the text over here in the upper right-hand corner. So with the course content selected, and again, this is our chapter one, we renamed it. Let's go to insert text block. I'm gonna double click, and I'm just gonna type in course content. All right, now let's take a look at where that was inserted. So you'll notice that just by going in, let me increase the size so you can see it here. There we go, course content. Right now, that object is immediately following the chapter. What does that mean? Well, it's gonna be inherited on this page right here, and it's also gonna be inherited in this section and then this page here. So we can go in and exclude from the parent. 
let's say that we want the word course content to appear just on the main section, not, in, not within these detailed sections, but just up on the main area. So we can click on section one, go to properties, and look what it has, inherent. I can select it, and I can say specific objects from parents. There's that text block I just added. I want it excluded. And I'll click OK. And it's now excluded. So from the chapter, there's my text block. It's on the page, but now it's been excluded from that section. Wow, that's really cool. And with a little bit of planning, um, you can be very dangerous in regards to things appearing, disappearing, um, all based upon this architecture. All right. Well, again, that was just for demonstration purposes. We're not going to use a, a, a block in here, of course, content. So let's just get rid of that. I'm just going to hit delete. And again, um, we don't need a section here today. Again, don't make it overly complicated. Um, only use sections, again, if you're going to deep dive into a uh, specific area of your content and you really need that organizational element in there. So section, we don't need you today. We're just going to select you. Oh, you know what? One thing here before we uh, get out of section. <laughs> and this is how complex it could get. So with section selected, I can go back to home and look at this. I can add another section. Oh, if I want to get crazy, you can add another section in there. Wow. So you can get yourself in some trouble here really quick. So again, you better have a game plan for your structure and how you're going to organize your content because, again, you can go way deep into the, the architecture and how you want these sections set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those out. And let's delete our section now, now that we just have pages. So this first page here is going to be our video page. Let's go ahead and rename it and just call it video. And now it's time to add a little bit of media. Yeah, media time. So let's go to the Insert ribbon. And we have a media section in here. Notice that we have audio and we have video. Let's go ahead and click on Video. The options include adding a video file. My video, which is something, a video from the library. You can have a streaming video. Or you can even go ahead and if you have a webcam, go ahead and do a new video recording. Today we're going to go ahead and select video file. Files here. Go into video and there we go. So the supported video files in Lectora include the following. AVI, QuickTime, MPEG, which is what we have here today, MP4, Windows Media, um, ASF, and Flash Video. So I want the chef interview, hit open. All right, and the video is now on the screen. Just like an image, just like a text block, the video has properties. Let's take a look at those properties. So starting over from the left, you can see that we do have a name for the object. The object itself is called chef underscore interview. Obviously, it's grabbing this name um, or naming it from the file name, which happens to be chef interview.mp4. Wonderful. If you need to edit the video, a Torah publisher does come with a uh, light editor, video editor in here. Um, this video has already been edited, so there's no reason to go in and um, edit the video. The appearance. Do we need this video initially hidden? You know, if we're doing something programmatically and we want the user maybe to click a button and then the video appears, maybe. But no, we just want the video to come up. So there's no reason to hide it. Is there a reason to always stack this video on top? No, we really don't have anything to be concerned about on this page. It's really simple. I think the only thing that we have to be concerned about is the page title. Notice the video has crept up and is just kind of en encroaching upon the page title. Not a problem. You can scale the video down just like a, an image element. We can simply click on the corner point, click and drag, and we can move it down a little bit. 
There we go. I'm going to go ahead and scale this down just slightly. All right. So I've gone and I've scaled it down and moved it down. Let's continue in the properties. Take a look at the specific playback options. These are the important ones. So do I want the user to control the video or do I want to go ahead and push the video towards the user? In other words, like, do I want to auto start? Do I want to loop? Is it going to roll over to start? Yeah, let's go ahead and auto start this, this video. What about the controller? What kind of look do I want in the controller? You can see that Lectora has various controller types in here. Some very stylized ones. My personal favorite is the one down here at the bottom, the kind of YouTube, I call it WhoTube. I'm going to select that. This is a nice clean look. And again, it's a very familiar interface here for folks that use YouTube. We can go in and synchronize events that are occurring um, in the video. Uh, and you can also add captions. Now again, that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here today. It's definitely some more advanced features that are in here. Um, so let's say I wanted text or other images appearing while the video was playing. You could synchronize those events out. All right, let's go ahead and let's preview this video. So we got to go back to view and we can run it. Or if you remember your hotkeys, we can go in and hit F10. Okay. So from the, you can the, see the video kicks piece, off. We are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. F12 takes us back. Let's go ahead and preview by going in and hitting F11 okay. so we get the full view so of it. So from the, the ownership piece, we are responsible for so the, the day-to-day -day operations back. and event planning. Take a look at the control. Outreach. Pause. We got play. Stop, which takes us back to the beginning. Okay. So from the, the video the time loads piece, up, we you can go in and make it full screen. For the day to day operations and event planning, it just hits escape. Community outreach. Uh, and then so we have a volume sort of control. Level, if you will. The next level that I feel we have are the culinary chef de cuisines. And I, I love it. So easy to implement video. Let's close out of that preview. All right, so now it's time to go in and add our additional uh, slides in here. After the video, we now come upon a knowledge check. So quiz question time, true, false. All right, so after they watched the video, we're going to make sure they were paying attention, and we, we now want to go in and add this knowledge check in here. How do we do that? Well. Uh, we know that when we go over to, over to home that we have pages in here, but this is more than just a page. We want to go into test and survey and notice that we can go in and add a question. Now, we've got to be careful about this. Just by going in and adding a question, this is going to give us a nice knowledge check. When you are ready to put your final quiz in, we will add a test structure. Your assignable unit is going to go back and grab the score from everything under the test. If it's just a knowledge check and you don't want it to be a part of that final score, all you got to do is go in and add a question. Fantastic. So let's go to test and survey. We'll go to question and the first option right there is true false. Take a look at all the various question types that we have here in Lectora. Multiple choice, multiple response, fill in the blank, number entry, matching, rank sequence, drag and drop, hotspot, even non-gradable ones like an essay or Likert chart. So question types, you are covered. Let's hit true, false. So the question creator dialog appears and we get some tabs across the top. Setting up the question, setting up the feedback, and then the programming of the question, the number of attempts. Let's go into the question. So here we can go in and give our question a name. This is going to be, we'll call it knowledge check one. There's also assigned variable. 
question 0001. Now this is the first time that we've seen a variable mentioned in here. And a variable is nothing but a bucket, a bucket that's going to hold some content in it. And you can carry this bucket around throughout the whole entire course. So the value that's going to be retained here is what the result of the question is. It's going to be stored inside this variable question 0001, and we can pull that value back anytime that we need it. There's also a point value. So instead of a percentage, let's say that you want to do a weighted quiz. So the point value, instead of being 1, maybe it's 10. Even for this knowledge check, you can have a point value. We have some question text, and we have an image with the question. So for the question text, I'm just going to go back. And here's our question. I'll just copy it and paste it in here. And the answer is going to be true. They do have an AM and PM chef. So it's true. Um, do I want an image with this question? I can put one in here if I want, or I can put one after the fact. What about feedback? So I do have some specific feedback in here. Um, I can enable feedback if I want. So we can display a message, and I can modify the message. And my message is, yeah, spring, um, copy this. And so I can go and edit the message. Yes. Springhouse has nine people report to the AM chef and the PM chef. So now that is custom feedback. I can just keep the incorrect feedback as it is, or I can go in, make it unique, and say no. All right, excellent. Let's clean this up here real quick. Now, as far as the attempts, well, I mean, it's a true-false question. So I could go ahead and set the maximum attempts allowed. You only get one shot at this. And I can put custom feedback in here once they reach the maximum attempt. But again, it's true-false. There's no need, reason to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now this knowledge check, notice that it's added on the video page. Hmm didn't add a new page for us. But notice that the knowledge check is an object unto itself. And that's fine. We've obviously placed this um, question on the wrong page. So let's go ahead and add a new page just for our knowledge check, and we'll move it over and talk about moving objects between pages. All right, so I'm just going to close that up for a second. Let's go ahead and click on the video page. Anytime that you want to add a new page, make sure you select the prior page. We'll go to Home, Page, let's go ahead and make it blank. And we'll simply title it KC1, short for Knowledge Check 1. Now, earlier I showed you how to go in and uh, move objects in regards to a stacking order. And that was up here at the top in the theme graphics, and we we're just moving things around. But now watch how I can go in and take the knowledge check. I can click on it, drag it, and look at that. I can drag it right into this new page I created and release. And now it's on that page. But why didn't it show up? Look what's selected. The video page is still selected. You've got to be really careful with this. Sometimes when you're working visually inside the development environment, it may not make any sense as far as like, hey, did something disappear? Where did it go? Um, what's currently being shown on the screen? And so take the time and go back to your Title Explorer and look at what you have selected. I'm going to close up Video, click on Knowledge Check 1. There it is. There's our question. I'm going to select the question click on the whole question, and move it down. Now, obviously, we're going to have to bump up the size here on this question. Not a problem. Uh, we can just go in and click on our question text, 
and start increasing the font size. Once you increase the font size, you can go in and start moving these other elements around. All right. Now, when you want to select multiple items in a layout, uh, now the obvious, you know, and this is a little confusing uh, if you're used to working with other tools, uh, shift seems to be the one to, you know, you want to go in and select multiples, but not in Lectora. To select multiples in Lectora, you're going to use the control key, the control key to select multiples. So again, I've held down control. I selected both the radio buttons and true false. And now I can go in and select, move this up, select true, select false, and set a size here. And I just need to go ahead and stretch these out. Move this down slightly. Again, control to select multiple. Now I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to go ahead and nudge this down. Just the down arrow. And then move that out. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here at our question. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11. I'm going to select true. And look at that. We immediately get feedback. Yes, yeah, Springhouse has nine people who report to the AM chef and the PM chef. All right, so our, uh, our feedback here um, obviously is going to be a pop-up box. So uh, again, be careful with that. Again, make sure that's going to function properly in your environment. But hey, this is a nice little knowledge check that we have here. All right, so next, we just need a straight up topic slide. A slide with the image of Springhouse, Chef Tim, and some caption text. All right, so let's go ahead and let's knock that out. So now we need to go in and add yet another page. I'm going to go ahead and click on Knowledge Check 1. We'll go to Home, Page, and we know we're going to have some text. We're going to have an image. So we've got a few images in here. You know what, I think just for this layout, I'm going to go ahead and just put a blank layout in. This is going to be our topic slide. And this is going to be, we'll call this hospitality business. Double click. And we'll just paste that name right in there. And make that lowercase. All right. Time to go in and add some content. Now, again, the storyboard says that we need um, Image of Springhouse, Chef Tim, and some caption text. So let's go ahead and get that in here. We'll go to Insert, Image, and Image File. But hey, didn't we add that content in earlier? Yeah, we did. We added the logo, we added the image, and we added Chef Tim. Can't we just go in and use that content that we had uh, prior? Yeah, you can. I mean, you can copy it from the Title Explorer, but let me show you a different way of bringing this content in. Let's hit Cancel. Let's go over to Title Resources. Now, earlier when I selected Title Resources, it was completely blank, but now it is just chock full of different images and content that we have brought in here. All right, PNG graphics, I got my videos down below here. But again, the assets I'm looking for is Chef Tim and the image. And look at that, they're right there. So I can go ahead and click on that photo, click, drag, and drop. And the photo is in there. And go ahead and scale that down. And get it in position. Let's bring in Chef Tim. Go to Title Resources. Grab Chef Tim. Click and drag, and release. And there he is. I'm just going to scale him down and move him over here to the left-hand side. 
So the storyboard goes in and says, now, all right, um, we want to go ahead and have a caption text in here. We need, we need a caption. We want to grab this text right here. So I'm going to grab the text. I'm going to copy it, get that ready. So for the caption, let's go ahead and take a look at the Add Image section. We have the ability to add shapes and lines. Let's hit the drop down. And I need a caption. Let's see. Oh, yeah. All the way down at the bottom here, you can see that we have callouts. And for this caption, I'm going to use this rounded rectangle callout. Let's go ahead and select that. I'm going to click and drag and establish a caption here. All right, so the caption is established, and I want to insert my text inside there. We're going to double click on the caption. Notice that there is now an insertion point, and I'm going to paste. And there's my text. Now, obviously, we're going to have to make some adjustments here with the text and with the caption. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my text just by clicking and dragging. And I'm going to go to Style. And we can modify the text. So maybe I want the text to be a dark gray. And we'll change the 14 point. And an opportunity to change the font and something, again, it's a little bit more readable here. Let's just go with an Arial. All right, so I have the text approximately the size that I want it. And I want to now go in and modify this caption. So the caption is going to need to be a little bit bigger. So I can stretch this out. And I can go in and uh, grab the caption. And grab this little point down here, the little yellow point, and move this around. Look at that. It's so cool. So it's pointed right at Chef Tim. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to need to go in and reduce this, the font here a little bit. It's a little bit too big. And let's see if we make this body text. All right, also what I want to do is go in and um, modify the look. So notice that for the style, that we can go in and we can um, modify the shape. So if you're not like into the rounded rectangle, you can go in, you can do the, the square. You could do the circle, go back to rounded. Um, we have the fill style. So again, if I want something a little bit more simple, again, that gradient is a little bit difficult to read, that text. So maybe I want something um, as far as a solid. I could just go with white or maybe a lighter color. You can modify the opacity. I'm going to make it semi-transparent. So if I want to change the opacity to 50%, like that, it's a little tough to read. Let's make it completely opaque again by the 100. And let's set it to white. There we go. All right, so a lot of contrast there. All right, so it seems like we want to go in and Move this over here so that it fits within the, uh, the caption area. Now, again, sometimes the, you know, the caption is, um, or putting the text inside, there was a little bit too much text in here. And that happens every now and then. You'll notice that it's breaking the bounds of the, of the uh, caption itself. And I don't have anything in here to help me out in regards uh, to margins on this object. So even coming in and 
yeah, getting into the properties. There's no specific properties for that margin. Now, sometimes you'll need to do the following, you know, especially if you want a certain look. You can go in and add the caption just as a piece of artwork. We can remove that copy. I can cut it. And if, again, if we have a lot of text, you may want to go in and insert a text block on top of the caption. And this is going to give you a greater level of control. I'm going to go ahead and paste my copy back in there. And you can see that now I can, I can really control the margins and where, this, um, where the text is going to sit. Again, I can go in and modify the font size. Uh, again, change the justification. Where'd my text go? Well, take a look at the load order. Yeah, let's take a look. The text block is loading in first, and the callout is loading in second. It's on top, right? Loading first, loading second. I got to move this up. So I'll click on my callout rectangle, drag it up, release, and now my copy appears inside of the caption. All right, just a little tweak here. And that is looking pretty good. Excellent. Let's go ahead, let's save our work. And we'll just click OK. All right. Well, very good. Well, we're off to a really good start here. We've gone in, we've set up the structure, we've taken a look at inheritance, we have some core functionality in regards to navigation. We have a lot more work to do, though. We're going to need to go in and build some interactions. We're going to have some quiz questions in here, so we're going to go ahead and put a final quiz at the end. We need a help page because we got a button for it, so we might as well go ahead and, and build something for it. And we got some final testing and publishing to do. So we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be right back. And when we do, we'll finish our course here in Lectora Publisher 12. Hello, everybody. Josh Cavalier, and we're back with Lectora Publisher 12 Sprint. And so now we're ready to go ahead and finish up our course. We've got a really good foundation built. Let's go ahead and continue building out our pages. All right, so where we left off, we were just going in, and we have our title page, we have our learning objectives, and we now have our course content. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this whole entire preview. I'm going to go ahead and click up here at my title and let's preview the whole course. So I'm going to hit F11 on my keyboard and you can see that we have our title page. We'll hit next and we have our learning objectives. Next. Okay. And we have so our from video. The, the ownership piece, we, we have our knowledge check with our feedback, and that leads us to our last page, the hospitality business, where we added the artwork, we added the caption, we decided to go ahead and put that text outside, and we have that photo in the background, all right? So that's where we're at. So we have some things to go in and clean up here. Uh, notice that the course title across the top, this is our employee orientation. So we need to go in and clean that up. As far as the home functionality, that's going to take us right back to the title. Right? So we'll take a look at that. Um, X is just going to go ahead and close out. That's fine. But we do need a help page. So at the end, we'll be adding a resources page that will take the student to that location. Hey, this is looking pretty good. All right, what's next? All right, so let's close out of the preview. And we'll go back to our storyboard. All right, so next we have a interaction. How do we define hospitality, service, and remarkable service? This is a multi-state object rollover reveal. Oh my goodness. So how are we going to accomplish this? All right, so now we are going to get into some action. 
And with actions here in Lectora, uh, it's actually amazing what this tool can do. Uh, Lectora is probably one of the more flexible programming environments in regards to e-learning tools out there in the marketplace. And what we need to do is go in and build a custom interaction where the user can roll over certain objects and we're going to get things to pop up. All right. So how are we going to handle that? Well, you know, first it comes down to understanding like what is possible. And in the Lectora environment, we're able to click on things. We're able to roll over elements. Um, we're going to need to have things appear and also have things disappear. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. I know any time that I'm thinking about building interaction, I always you know, ask the questions like, you know, one, what is possible? What is built into the application? And then two, how would I go in and take those features, leverage them, and use them to build uh, an interaction like this? So let's first go in, we're going to build a page. We're then going to go in and create a button and see what is possible and then build our interaction. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're going to go in and build out our, our page here. I'm going to select hospitality business and let's add our page. We will go to home and let's click page and we have a brand new page. Again, you should always name it immediately, and this is going to be, uh, we'll just call it our how we do things. How we do things. All right, so that's named. And now we need to go in and take a look at an interactive object, this button. Let's go to the insert ribbon. Here we have add navigation and interaction button. We have four different types of button. We have text button, stock button, a transparent button, and an image button. Let's go ahead and select text button. So a text button appears. And you know what is possible with this button? What can we do? Well, the buttons are going to have an action. And to create an action, we need some type of an event. We have to have the user interact with this button. What is that interaction? The interaction right now is defined as a mouse click. So if you click on this button, do something. What else can we do? When the button shows, when we hide it, when we show it, when we click it, when we enter it, when we exit, when we right click on it. All right, now if I remember correctly, our storyboard says that when we roll over this button, show some text. All right, when we roll over the button, show some text. So we have mouse enter, that's great. We also have mouse exit. I'm pretty sure we're gonna need that one too. All right, so let's think about that. When my mouse enters this button, I want to do something. What can I do? I can navigate. I can hide and show objects. I can move things. Let's see, I can display. It goes on and on. But I think the one that I want is I want to show. I want to show some objects here. All right. So I think I have a good idea of how I want to start this interaction. I just need some content. So let's go ahead and let's first build out our content. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create three buttons. One for hospitality, one for service, and one for remarkable service. So let's set that up. So we have our first button here and the label on that button is going to be hospitality. So let's double click and I'll go in and I'll paste that in there and we have our hospitality button. That looks good. Let's go ahead and copy and paste the button. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and then paste. And we'll add another button in here. And this one will go in and we'll label, label service. Copy and paste. Hey, we need one more button. Copy and paste. 
And for that button, that's going to be accept a remarkable service. And we'll paste that in there. Just need it to fit. Perfect. All right, so I think I'm going to zoom out just slightly here so you can see the layout. Um, also, you know, take advantage of your alignment tools. If you hold down the control key, you can select multiple objects. And I can go in and we can align this. And so I want to align top. And maybe I want to go in and even set them, uh, space them evenly horizontally. That's looking pretty good. Now we need to go in and add our content down below. So let's go ahead and insert some text blocks. So we'll add a text block here. And let me go in and grab my content. Okay, so we have some bullet points here. We'll copy that and double click and just paste them in. expand that so I can actually see all my bullet points. We'll clean that up in just a bit. Okay, we need to add another text block. Insert text block, grab our copy. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it in. And we'll just move that up. Again, I'm not worried about the, the cosmetic look of the text block at this point. I'm just copying the text and I'm getting it into the Lectora environment. I'm going to insert another text block, double click, and paste. All right. Uh, very good. Okay, so I have my content in there. Now, you'll notice that after going in and creating the buttons and building out the text blocks that, what does Lectora do? It auto names the objects. Uh, again, you got to name it to claim it, and Lectora is doing the best it can as far as giving you an idea of what types of objects are in here, but when, I come, when it comes time to start programming these items, I have no idea what I'm working with. I mean, I know there are buttons, I know there are text blocks, but which button and which text text block, and we need to build in that separation. So we got to start naming these. So for this button here, let's go ahead, that's going to be our hospitality button. And the next button is going to be service. And then we have exceptional or remarkable service. So that's going to give me a really good, really good idea which buttons I'm working with. Now what about the text? Well, this is going to be our hospitality text. Text block two, that's going to be our service text. And then we have our remarkable service text. Great. I got all those text blocks in there. All right, so how is this interaction going to work? Well, once you get everything formatted and looking nice, the user is going to come in, roll over, and explore this information. Again, as they roll over, the content will appear, and as they roll off, the content is going to go away. All right. So, when I look at these objects, they are currently visible. They're currently visible. But notice that when you select a text object, I can go into the properties of that object, and I have a nice little feature right here, initially hidden. Can't see it. It's there in memory, you just can't see it. Oh, that's awesome. So we're going to go in and we're going to select each of these objects and select initially hidden. All right, so all three text objects are initially hidden. What does that look like? I'll hit F11. Give it a quick preview. I get a nice rollover feature, and my text blocks are hidden. That's great. That's a good start. Let's close out of the preview. Now let's get into the programming. Let's go ahead and click on our hospitality button, 
and go to the action for that button. Here we're saying on mouse enter, the action is going to be, am I going to hide something? Am I going to show something? Ooh, look at this. Toggle, show, hide. This is the two for one deal. Uh, this is going to allow you to go ahead and not only just show something, but also hide something. Let's toggle, show, hide. Okay, what are we toggling here? We're going to go ahead and toggle. Wow, look at all those objects. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why that we name our objects. Um, you're going to get a huge laundry list here. Anything that's included into the build of the page, including all of our inherited objects, are something we can talk to. Well, look at that. We named it hospital text. I'm going to go ahead and select it. We should test this. So I'm going to go ahead again, hit F11, or you can go to View and select Preview. Roll over and roll out. Roll over, roll out. Show and hopefully hide. Well, it looks like it's toggling. Well, not exactly the effect that I'm looking for, but close. I mean, it is kind of toggling, but I don't think it's going to get the job done. All right, well, that's a good try. We were close on that one. Let's try something else. Let's select the button, go to Action, and say On Mouse Enter. We're going to go ahead and show our hospitality text. All right, that's fine. But you know, now I need to go ahead and put a very specific action on here that says when you leave the object, hide the text. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and do it by going in and adding another action. So you can add additional actions on an object. So on this hospitality button, let's add another action and say on mouse exit, I would like to hide my hospitality text. All right, let's give it a go. Again, I'm going to preview this. Show, hide, show, hide. Excellent. That's exactly the functionality that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and close out of the preview. All right, we got a little bit of cleanup work to do. You know, I want to, I've, I've talked about naming your objects. Well, guess what, folks? You got to name your code too. Every action that's in here, Lectora is going to go in and automatically give you a name. So it says on mouse enter and on mouse enter show. All right, got that. But I always like to come in and um, be as specific as possible. So, and I always like to start with the action. You know, like what is it doing? Show, and then I can say mouse enter is the event. And then, you know, it's the text. Hide. Mouse, enter, and I can even be specific as far as what text it is. I mean, this is really giving me an idea of what the action is, the event, and then the object that it's on. Again, it's up to you what kind of naming convention that you want, but again, notice that down here, these generic action names, it's going to be tough to go ahead and parse that out. All right, so let's see. So we've got, we got this working here, and I could go in and take these actions and use them, right? There's no sense in going in and building the actions from scratch. These are working just fine. I just need to go ahead and copy those actions and paste them on here. Now, what about these, these actions that are already here? No worries. I can just simply go in and delete those actions out by hitting delete. So I'll delete those actions out. I'll take this great action that I have here and copy it. 
go to service, paste, and paste. I'll take hide, copy, select my button, paste the action, and go to remarkable service, right click, and paste the action. All right. Now, I like to keep things tidy here, and I'm just going to go ahead and move this up and move this up like so. Now we just have to modify the actions. So for service, this is going to be our service text. And we're going to hide our service text. For the remarkable service, same technique. We're going to go in and show our remarkable service text and then hide that remarkable service text. All right, let's see what we got here. So I'm going to just save my work. Before we continue, let's go ahead and preview. Again, I'm hitting F11, hospitality, service, remarkable service. Wow, that's great. So we have this nice interaction here. Now we just need to go in and modify our copy. So uh, as far as the, the font, again, we can go to the home ribbon. And here we have our text formatting options. We can go in and bump up the font size here. 16 looks good. I'm just going to extend this out. And again, you know, it's. Um, because we are showing these one at a time, I mean, there is a little bit of room here that I can use. Got plenty of space down below. And any other additional cleanup work you can do right in here. Yeah, let's see here. Let's get this all 16 point. I'm going to have to just key that in there. You know, sometimes uh, what will happen in Lectora, this comes up, is that you'll get, uh, when you paste, you'll get the uh, formatting, the local formatting coming in from the, the application that you're using. Uh, notice here, spell check, kicking right in, no problem. When you see that red underline in there, obviously I've misspelled expectations. So I can just go in and right click. And expecting. And expectations. All right. So wonderful. Um, again, I can remove these little periods here, just a little bit of cleanup. I don't know why those periods are at the end. All right, well, that looks pretty good right there. So we're going with 16-point Arial, and we'll just go in and continue that, same formatting all the way through. And again, get this formatted here properly. Again, when you, when you come across some of these bullet uh, issues like this, you can always just put another hard return in there, and that takes care of that issue right there. Okay, so a little bit of centering. Again, holding down the control key, you can select both the button and the text, and we can align that center. And align center. And we can align center on that. All right. So again, it's it's up to you how you want to um, you know have the text and have the button as far as the layout. But I think that's going to look pretty good. Let's give it a go. 
Again, we'll preview, hit F11, or we can go to View and Preview. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, well done. So we now have one of those interactions complete. We've created three buttons. Each button has a show action, has a hide action, and we're just simply showing and hiding some text. We went ahead and we named all of our text blocks, we named all of our buttons, and this is a nice, clean interaction. All right, well done. Let's keep going here. Oh, here we have another knowledge check. So we know that we have to create a new page and then insert the question on the page. Now, what makes this interesting is that you can have multiple questions on a single page. You're not limited by one. That's kind of cool. If you wanted two, three, four more questions, you can go for it. I mean, I'd watch the layout, but that is entirely possible. Let's go ahead and create our multiple choice question. So we need knowledge check number two. Let's go to insert, or I'm sorry, home, and we'll go to page, and let's make a, a blank page. This is going to be knowledge check two. Now we'll go to test and survey. We'll go to question, and this is going to be multiple choice. So now we have a multiple choice question we're going to place in here, and of course, once you select that, you're going to see the question creator panel open up. So this is going to be our uh, knowledge check to question. And the variable associated with it is question underscore 0002. And we, again, we can give it a point value of 10 if we're tracking points. The question text, yep, it's right in here. So we want to make our service, and we have our choices down below here. Notice you can randomize the choices. That's kind of a nice uh, option. Remarkable, which is going to be correct. And that's the correct answer. It's already flagged as correct. And we'll put the distractors in there. We got acceptable, approachable. And we'll worry about the formatting here in just a moment. And then dependable. Again, my correct answer is already selected there, remarkable. That's looking pretty good. There's no associated image with this choice, but you can pair those up if you have specific images that go with it. You can go ahead and show the choices as a drop list, too, if you want to save some screen real estate. There's no image that's going to go with this question. Let's take a look at the feedback. So you can just leave the question as it is, or we can go ahead and enable feedback. We're going to leave the feedback as it is. You can see you can easily come in and modify that. We can go to attempts. And let's say we're going to give them two attempts at this. Two attempts. Let's go ahead and click OK. It renders the question out, and we'll just move that question down. Now, obviously, we're going to have to go in and increase the font size here. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up and move these out. And again, holding down Control. Uh, building in some separation in between the, uh, the answers. Then we'll modify the font size, and we should be good to go for this particular question. Again, holding down Control. Great. We'll go in and Increase the font size here. And we do without our service. We want to make our service okay. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of these here. And we'll stretch them out. And that's it. So we now have our question. Obviously, there's more design that I can do here, but the question is done. I can test it. Let me hit F11. We want to make our service uh, dependable. Incorrect. We want to make it remarkable. Correct. All right, so I had two choices on there. Notice how the quiz question is going to go ahead and lock down after that second choice. So it is programmed. Uh, I can't make any additional changes. I can't make any, anything else. It's done. Um, look at that. Okay, so once it's done, it's done. And again, if I want to clean this up, I can align this and make it look really nice. But I think you get the idea here. Knowledge check question number two is complete. Let's keep rolling. All right, so the next item that we have here is another topic slide. And we got some, um, some food, fresh and local. So we're just going to go ahead and use one of our image shots in here. Let's go ahead and create another layout. From the home ribbon page. All right, so we can go in and have an image and text column. And this is going to be our food, fresh and local. So we'll put the title in for the page. We get a text block and we get an image. So let's go ahead and copy our text, double click. Put our text in there, and then for our image, now watch what happens here with the image. We're going to actually go up into our Lesson 3 directory, sorry, Lesson 4, and we have some food in here. So we're going to go ahead and take the, uh, the plate small and hit open, and look what it's done. Yeah, so that's going to happen, and uh, you know, one of the things about the placeholders, and I mentioned this earlier that you got to be aware of, is that it will go ahead and stretch your image to fit that placeholder area. So if, if that's the case and there's no correlation between the placeholder and the image, you may want to just go ahead and undo. So let's undo that. We can come all the way to the top left, hit undo, get rid of the placeholder, delete, and then simply go ahead and just insert the image. We'll go to the Insert ribbon, Image, Image File, Plate 1 Small. Hey, if you want Plate 2 Small, go for it. Whatever looks good to you. We'll hit Open, and we get the plate. Let's go ahead and grab a corner and scale that up. Let's move our text over. And we'll just increase the font size. We'll go to home and we'll bump this up to 16 point. Okay, excellent. So again, very simple here, just an image and some text. All right, so we, we have another interaction that we have to build. This one, we're going to use tabs. Hmm, tabs. So how are we going to get away with that? Well, uh, again, we can use buttons, uh, or we can go in and create our own artwork. It's entirely up to you how you want to go about this. Uh, but it's very similar to the interaction that we built prior. So let's go ahead and let's build our tab-based interaction here. All right, so time to insert another page. Again, from the home ribbon, let's go to page. Let's make a blank page. Okay, so this is standards of conduct. So we'll grab that for the title, and we'll double click and paste. All right, so we have our title here, uh, and now we need to go in and think about how we're going to get this tab interface to work. Well, you know, one, I wanted to go ahead and make it look like tabs. Right? Um, and so 
what can we use? Well, I mean, I can go ahead and insert shapes and lines, specifically, you know, shapes that look like tab sections, like, you know, this shape right here. I can use, um, you know, I can use a trapezoid that kind of looks like a tab top, like so. That looks pretty good. But what about interactivity? I mean, can I go in and add an action to this? Of course you can. Look at that. I can add an action to my, uh, to my trapezoid here. Now, the only problem is, is that, you know, as far, as far as visualization, I may not have a rollover effect built in like a button, but I do, I do get the ability to go in and add an action to just a, a draw object, and that's pretty cool. What do I get with it? Well, it's like what we had before. Mouse click, mouse enter, mouse exit. Wow, that's really neat. So let's go with that. Let's go ahead and use these trapezoids to build our tabs. And we're going to have this so that you can just go ahead and click on the tab. And it's going to go ahead and show the content. All right. Now what about the rest of the artwork? Well, we're going to have three tabs across the top. We're going to have a base artwork below, maybe a folder, which is going to be a rectangle. And we'll go ahead and we'll fill them with a, um, like a light tan color. We then need to add our text in here and then hide the text and then add our actions. And so that's what we're, that's what we're going to build first. Let's go ahead and do the artwork. All right, so this trapezoid, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, if you double click on it, I can even go in and, you know, say, uh, type in some text in there. Can't see it because I don't have any fill in here. It's white on white. But it is nice to know I can put text inside there. All right, so we're going to need three tabs. Uh, we, need, we have honesty, conduct, and appearance. Let's take a look at the properties of the trapezoid. Again, if you haven't put your trapezoid in there yet, it's under insert, shape and line, trapezoid, right there. It's a great looking tab. We'll go to style, fill style, and I can go ahead and give it a light tan color. All right, as far as outline, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to have an outline. Actually, I kind of like that flat look, just like so. We'll double click, and that first word is honesty. That's right. And I can go in and modify the, uh, the text, like so. And maybe I'll bump up the font size just a little bit here to 12. And there's our first tab. Again, you got to name it to claim it. My recommendation is to go in and rename this Honesty tab. Again, I have, a, I have an action on here. I haven't programmed it yet, and that's fine. Because we're going to need to go in and copy and paste this tab. We need two more tabs. So we can right click, copy, right click, paste, and just move it over. This tab is going to be our conduct tab. So double click, conduct, and I'll remember to go in and rename my tab down here, conduct. That's looking pretty good. Got one more to do. And we'll copy, control C, and paste, control V, and move it over. The final one here is going to be appearance. Just grab that. Paste that in. And I think, yeah, it's fine. All right, so that looks good. And that is going to be our, our appearance tab. 
All right, so I have my honesty tab, my conduct tab, and my appearance tab. Wonderful. So now we need to go ahead and add the artwork in the background. So let's go to insert, shapes and lines, just a simple rectangle. And I'm gonna click and drag and add that rectangle back here. That's gonna be our folder, like so. Properties. All right, so do we need to hide this or anything? No, it's always gonna be up the whole time. So this is the difference here uh, with this particular interaction. Uh, the artwork itself is gonna remain on the screen. We're gonna add text blocks on top of that artwork and that's what's gonna swap or change out. So no need to set this to initially hidden. We will go to style though and set it to look just like the tabs. So the fill style is gonna be that tan no outline, give it that nice flat look. And this is looking pretty good. I like that folder. Now I'll just stretch this out just a little bit here. Hopefully your folder is looking good. Fantastic. Well, I know that you know, this object is in position um, where I want it for this interaction. I mean, I may, may just center it up just a little bit more on the page using control the multiple select. That looks good. Uh, and I want to go ahead and lock the position of these objects in. So I can go in and select the object, position and size, can lock that in. Same thing with these elements here, I can lock those in so I don't inadvertently move it. I can select it, I just can't move it. Great. Now we need to go in and create our text objects. We'll go to Insert, Text Block. And we'll copy our text and we'll paste it in. Yeah, we'll get some formatting in here. We'll bump this up to, uh, let's just say 16. Again, what is being rendered first? The text block's being rendered first and then our rectangle. Obviously that's not gonna work. I'm gonna drag the rectangle up so that it renders first, then the text block. Great, that's looking good. Now I can always go over to the Title Explorer and I could copy that and paste that text block and paste it again. I know the first one's gonna be my honesty text. And then we have our conduct. And then appearance. Great. Um, now, this is a good opportunity to actually go ahead and start hiding objects while you're working with them. Remember these little boxes I talked about earlier? Well, if you go in and you click on them, it temporarily turns off the content. This is wonderful when you want to focus in on just one object. Here we need to update the text. So I'll go in, copy the conduct text, double click. We'll get that in there and we'll move it up to 16 point. So now that text right there is unique. There's my honesty text right there, my conduct text, and now I just need to work on my appearance text. So I'll turn the visibility of conduct off. This is my appearance text right here. We'll get that copy. And we'll go in and we'll paste that in. Again, we'll bump that up to 16 point. Excellent. All right, so we have honesty, we have conduct. Now again, that can be really difficult to look at. So I know that they're there. I just may want to just go ahead and turn them off for right now. Okay, another thing that we need to do is to go in and set these objects to initially hidden, right? Remember that property? So initially hidden, I don't want any of that content showing. So all three elements can be initially hidden. Again, I can multiple select, change the modifier and the properties, and all, now all three are. 
So whether I select them one at a time, you can see that they are initially hidden. Great. Well, let's preview, take a look. I'm going to hit F11. We've got our nice folder here. None of my copy is appearing. Perfect. And now we're going to just go in and set this up to where you can go in and click and have the content appear. All right, let's do it. All right, so programming time. So now we're going to go in and go to the Honesty tab, and we'll look at the first action. The action's already applied to the tab, to that, trap, to that trapezoid. And the action is going to be on mouse click. I like to go ahead and show. And this is where, again, where naming comes into play. Um, I want to go ahead and show my honesty text. All right. Now, so I want to show honesty text. But what about the other two text objects? I mean, I don't know which order the user is going to go ahead and click this. What if they click appearance first and that appearance text comes up and then they click honesty? Well, in addition to showing the text, we need to go ahead and hide the other two. We would have to hide conduct and hide appearance, right? So we're only showing one at a time. So we need to go in and add those two actions. Let's go up to action and hit add action. On mouse click, I would like to hide the conduct text. And I better key that in here, hide conduct text. We'll add another action. On mouse click, I like to hide the appearance text. Hide. Appearance text. All right, great. So we got that in there. Now we need to go ahead and continue with our other two tabs. Uh, again, you know, I can go ahead and you know do these individually, but you know what? I already have the code done. It's just a matter of going in and changing a little bit of the little bit of the code and a little bit of the names. So I'm just going to rip the action out here by hitting delete. We'll go in and we will select these. I can go ahead and copy all three and paste. Look at that. Again, the way to do that is you hold down your control key. Multiple select your actions. Right click, copy. Select your object, right click, paste. And there they are. OK, so I know that this is going to be conduct. I'm going to hide honesty. And we might as well update the text down here. I'm going to show appearance. I'm going to hide conduct, and I'm going to hide honesty. OK, well, the names are updated. Now I've got to make sure my actions are reflecting the, reflecting the names. So show conduct text, mouse click, show conduct text. I want to hide my honesty text, hide my appearance text. OK, that's good. I want to show my appearance text, hide my conduct, and hide Honesty. Woo, OK. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to go ahead and save my work before I run this. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11. And there is our tab panel. Made from scratch. Yeah, no templates here. This is looking good. All right, awesome. So we just went in and we just finished that interaction. And I, I think it really shows you 
the power of Lectora Publisher in regards to building interactions. Again, we didn't use a canned interaction for this. We created it from scratch and it really didn't take that long. Once you, be, once you go in and begin to familiarize yourself with all the capabilities of Lectora, you're going to find this is a really powerful tool. So once you, you know, gain some experience, uh, the interactions you build can be very sophisticated and I think you're going to enjoy the amount of creativity um, that you can uh, explore and implement with this product. All right, well, let's keep going here. we got a few more things to implement um, to finish this project off. Okay, so we went ahead and we did our standards of conduct screen with our tabs. We now are going to move on to our final quiz. And then we have resources. Now this final quiz is going to be scored back to the learning management system, so we need to add a new structure in here. We have a true, false, a multiple choice question in. So now we're going to go in and we're going to go to test and survey and we're going to create a test. We're going to add a test. Let's click test. And you can see that, wow, we have a whole bunch of different things that are going on here. What happened? All right, first, the course content remains intact and it closed up. So that is still there. The test is unique and unto itself in regards to the structure. It's not in the course content. It is right off the root of our assignable unit. And that's fine. It could be sitting out here, and once we're done with our standards of conduct, it'll flow right into the test. We can rename the test, and I'm going to call this final quiz. What did it give us? Well, I know my entire interface has gone away. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's gone. Um, I do get a page count up here. I get a cancel button, a back button, a next button, and a page. Actually, two pages. I get a page one and a last test page and a done button that's going to appear there. All right. Well, let's take a look at the final quiz and um, specifically the inheritance. Where did my theme go? Like, what if I still want my theme to be in here? Maybe not the whole thing, like maybe the top bar and, you know, the look, the logo, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties. Look at the inheritance. There is no inheritance on my final quiz. Let's select it. Wow. Everything. There are no objects from the parent at all. No objects from the parent. Now you can come in here and be specific and say, all right, well, let's go ahead and give me the theme graphics back. And when I click OK, I get those theme graphics. Now if that's the way you want to roll with that, that's fine. I mean, essentially everything is going to be locked down. It's just the artwork. Nothing is going to function. Maybe you want to give some type of directive to the student to let them know that they're in quiz mode and that none of the buttons are going to work. Only the back, the next, cancel, and done. All right. So we can go in and we can tweak this layout and move the cancel and move the back and the next. Again, obviously there's going to be a little bit more work here for continuity um, in regards to you know, showing the student the quiz, but for right now, as long as you understand where these buttons are coming from and why the other objects are turned off, that's perfect. Okay, page number one, that's going to be question one. So we'll key that in there. And we'll just place our question on the page. We'll go to test and survey, and the question type is going to be multiple choice. Again, this could just simply be question um, number one in our quiz. The variable, obviously, is going to be unique, and it's question 003. Um, again, it's up to you, the naming convention that you want to implement here, uh, whatever you need to do to name to be consistent. Give it 10 points.
you are responsible for being, being honest, your conduct, your appearance, and this is going to be all the above. So I'm simply coming in, copying, and just pasting in my text in here for my answers. Got one more. It looks like I put my multiple choice before my true false. That's fine. We'll do the true false next. So the correct answer here is all the above. Of course, we don't want to put the word correct in there. <laughs> it's for developers only. All right, so that is the correct answer. Feedback, maybe we don't put any feedback here. Take the feedback off. Attempts, no, nope. you're only going to get uh, one attempt at this. Not infinite attempts, you only get one shot. All right, I'll click OK. Here's our question. Um, again, with everything selected, can't go in and modify this. So I have to select this individually. And again, move these down. And we can modify the font size. Okay, now it's time for our true-false question. So we have to add another page for that. So let's add a question two page. So I'll select question one. We'll go to page, add a blank page. You can see it automatically names it question two. We'll insert a question on there. We'll go to test and survey, question. This is going to be a true-false question. And this is going to be question two even though it is using the variable uh, question 0004 because of our two knowledge checks that we had prior. Our food is considered new American cooking. That's true. Get feedback. Um, we won't do any feedback here. Obviously, you just get one attempt. We'll click OK. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and move this down slightly. I'm not going to worry about the formatting here. I can format that later on. I think I will just kind of bump up the font size slightly on this so we can see the question. And we'll open that up just a little bit. All right, there we go. Excellent. All right, so we have question number two done right here. And then we have the last test page and then the done button right here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go back up to the final quiz. We have our questions in there. We have the last test page. With final quiz selected, take a look at the test options. You have properties, you have behavior, and you have results. All right, so behavior, you know, we already taught, or with properties, we already talked about inheritance, and we were able to go ahead and bring our Springhouse logo and the background artwork back in. So that was covered. Let's talk about behavior. All right, so from a behavior standpoint, this is show feedback for each question, student must answer each question and retain answers between sessions. Now, you know, obviously you can go in and you can change based upon your requirements. On completed or passed. Now, when does that happen? So that's going to be when they click the done button. Okay. Um, so on completed or passed, go to next page. Now I can jump them to different pages if I want. Or any location in the course. On cancel or failed, go to next page. You could also randomly select pages to randomize the quiz. You can even put a timer on the quiz if you want. We'll just keep it to next page. Let's take a look at results. You can grade the test. Sure, let's grade it. Lowest passing score, you got to get 100. 
include test score and overall score. We can show the test results. And you can also put a custom result submission in if you want to go and pass the score somewhere external. All right, excellent. All right, so let's take a look at our final quiz. I'm going to go ahead and select it, hit F11, check it out. Being honest, next. True, next. Done. Oh, final quiz, score 50% failed. I can print it out if I wanted to. And that will print it out to the printer. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so that quiz is working pretty good. I got that one question wrong, got 50% on that. So we got our quiz all squared away. Obviously, there's some formatting it would still need to update. But now we need to go in, and there's one final thing that we, we have to do for this particular course before we publish. And on our storyboard, we had resources. This is help. Okay, So it's our final slide or final page. And we're going to link out to Springhouse North, uh, springhousenc.com on our resources page. So we need one final page out here. So we're going to go in, and we're going to insert. Uh, how are we going to insert this page? Well, I'm going to go ahead and go up, all the way up to the assignable unit, go to Home, Page, I'll make it blank, and it's going to be Resources. And I want to go ahead and take the Resources page and drag it down to the bottom. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because I actually want it to be outside of the, uh, the final quiz. So I'm just going to take it. There we go. So I actually have the, you're going to find if you close up the structure and then drag down, you're going to have a better chance of actually getting this page underneath the final quiz. Hey, it's in position. This is wonderful. So now I can go in and insert a text block in here. And we got a couple, couple links here. I'm just going to paste those in there. So maybe we want to go in and just put in websites. All right, so how do we create hyperlinks? Well, I'm going to go in and just type the word home page. And I'm also going to type the word Facebook. The links are, that we need are right here. And what I want to do is go ahead and let me increase the font size so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to borrow this copy and actually create this link. To create a link in, in Lectora, you're just going to go ahead and highlight home page and hit right here, hyperlink. So what's the target? So I can go ahead and target this. And it looks like that is not exactly the link that I'm looking for. You know, I can go in and link somewhere in my document, but I can't go in and link out to the web. All right. So Let's see, maybe I need to change the action. I'm not navigating. What are we doing here? Oh, here we go. Go to web address. Let's go ahead and select that. And now my address in here. So we'll just go to www.springhousenc.com. And we'll open in a new window. I always open in a new window to, not, to take the content away from the current window. We'll click OK. Now for Facebook, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab that Facebook link. We'll do the same thing here for Facebook. We'll highlight that. And we'll go and add a hyperlink. Go to a web address. And we'll paste that link in there. Go to a new window. Click OK. And we'll get rid of our references here. 
That's nice and clean. And uh, oh, let's add uh, Chef Tim in there from our title resources. All right, so we got our resources page. This will be like our help page. We just now need to go in and program the help button. Let's find help. We have our help action. We'll select it and go to action. On mouse click, I would like to go to Let's see here. First page, next page, current page, resources. There it is, all the way at the bottom. Scroll to the top of the page, open in the existing window. Yeah, not in a new window, existing window. We want it to be have that same continuity with the course. All right, time to give it a go. So we're going to go in, we'll save our work, and we'll preview from the top. F11. Let's go ahead and hit our resources or help page. There we go. And go ahead and click on home page. It should launch a new window. Facebook, hopefully that'll work. Yep, Springhouse. Go back home. And there we go. Wow, this is looking great. Okay. Well, we almost made it. <laughs> We've got all our pages done. The last thing we need to do is get this thing out the door and publish. So let's take a look at publishing here, um, and then we will have this project complete. So with publishing, Lectora is going to be a little finicky in regards to your file, just making sure all the files are correct and there's no errors. So let's take a look at this publishing process. Okay, let's go to the home ribbon and all the way over to the right hand side, we're going to go to publish and look at our options here. So we can publish for offline consumption, you can publish for the web if you're going to a corporate intranet. You can also publish for AICC, SCORM, XAPI, um, online LMS system from Trivantis, Course Mill. All right, and so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at SCORM. All right, so you can see here that's going to go ahead and give me a, an error. And it says here, you know, before you can publish this to SCORM, um, you got to correct all the errors in the red. The SCORM web based standard restricts the author from creating links between multiple assignable units. On the web, uh, the transitions between assignable units is a function of the LMS. All right, so. Let's see here. So with that, we would have to go in, obviously we'd have to clean that up before we get this out the door. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at publish web. No error. All right, and that's because it's actually going to go ahead and skip the assignable unit. So let's go ahead and just publish the title to HTML just to get this thing out the door. And fixing that, that specific LMS error, again, is a little bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about here today. So Let's go ahead and publish title HTML, hit publish, and then we get our HTML options. So notice where the destination folder is at, documents, my titles, that's where it's dumping all the content at. This is going to be in the HTML output. We want to publish all the pages. You can zip it up. What's the name of the first page? That's the index file. So you'd reference the index file to kick the course off. We're not transferring it, file transfer. Um, this will allow you to compress and convert any MP3s, MP4s, images. This looks pretty good. We don't have to worry about any languages. Click OK. And you can see that's processing all the pages. Once all the pages are done, I can go ahead and preview, and I can preview in my browser of choice. All right. Um, and again, you know, obviously, you know, you're going to have to go ahead and whether you're doing AICC or SCORM, 
you're going to have to go ahead and work through the assignable unit, get that done. Um, and again, I don't quite understand what the assignable unit is doing there. It's, we only have one. All right, so again, we'd have to work through that one. But okay, very good. So we've gone ahead and we've completed the course. Um, Lectora, very, very powerful tool. And I'm glad that you're able to hang with me throughout the whole entire course. Again, just to review, the big takeaway here with using Lectora is understanding, one, that it is an HTML editing tool. I can't see the JavaScript. I can't see the CSS. I can't see the HTML but I can see some amazing work that's happening here before my eyes. That's really cool. Uh, there's no flash in, that's being involved. Again, this is all base HTML technology. The second thing is that you really want to understand inheritance. Okay? What is the relationship of those objects that are at the top, and then are they viewed in subsequent pages or sections or chapters? Again, you really got to think about your architecture and when and where things are visible. And finally, one last thing you want to do is make sure that you understand the actions and what is completely possible in the Lectora environment. This is going to help you create a plan uh, for your interactions. And we built two really cool interactions today. We built that button and that tab interaction, and it really didn't take that long. But again, the trick is understanding what is possible. So I just want to thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. Again, I hope you enjoy Lectora and Lectora Publisher, and hopefully we'll see you down the road for another Brightstream TV episode. Take care.